Hey everybody, and welcome to Cut From A Different Cloth. I am your host, Danny Parker, and happy October. Now, October is the month that is very near and dear to me, and this is why. Of course, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I'm always here to save the tatas first and foremost, because I have my own. And then two, <laughs> it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Now that month is specifically very near and dear to me, only because a lot of women that I know in my family, as well as my friends, they have all have been, well, not all of them, but I know a few have been victims of domestic violence, especially in Boston, where that is one of three crimes that Boston Police Department is called out for. So domestic violence, if you have a partner that you're in a a toxic relationship with it's never okay and abuse comes in just many forms not just physical but emotional verbal mental abuse that is all very real and also it is mental health awareness month now in the black community that's a stigma of oh he's crazy such and such is crazy all that give it to the lord i get it i'm all for giving it to the lord but i also want to talk to somebody too if i'm having unhealthy thoughts because a lot of people in the black community they suffer from depression especially being a black man a black woman in america in these times your mental health our mental health is very near and serious for us like there's no oh we don't have black people don't have mental health problems that's just white people no black people have very mental problems where you have ancestors who were slaves and and everything it's just no but Today's show, we definitely have our guest, my very first guest, Joseph Goncalves, the creator of the hit YouTube web series, Unconditional Love. Now, it is set in Boston, and he's going to give us so much more on it. It's currently on season two, and it's premiering on YouTube every Sunday at six. And we have him here in the studio, and he's going to talk to us about the show because this is one of my favorite web series right now. I get my life all the time at work when I'm watching the show. So I can't wait till he comes on and he just tells us everything about the tea what's going on and this like it's it's about a gay black couple in Boston and I just love Daniel and Benjamin and it's just it's just everything and I can't wait to get into it and get into the topics but right now we're about to go to a quick commercial and I will be back with the celebrity latest tea You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Bye. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Got a quarter? Welcome back, everyone, and welcome back to Cut From A Different Cloth. I am your girl, Danny P, and we're about to get into our first segment of the day, What's the Tea? Now, I know you guys have been hearing about the latest scandal with Harvey Weinstein and about a lot of women coming forth with, oh, he's, uh, I felt like, I, I felt like, you know, sexually compelled to give him what he wants in order for my career to be successful and prosper. Now, I have a few thoughts on that. Like a lot of household names been coming out, Gwyneth Paltrow, to name a few, like Angela Jolie, all of that have been speaking out saying they have always, Weinstein has always been asking for a massage. You know, he's always asking, hey, can I get a massage if they go to a party or something? And most women, when you're young like that, you feel very compelled, you know, to, okay, I'm young, I'm trying to break into Hollywood, I'm trying to get that one big break. But sometimes you, you do meet creepy producers. Like, it's very hard being in an industry where it's, hey, I'm a producer, I can get you in that movie. No, that's not a good pickup line. So to have a young actress, a young woman anyway, feel like she has to give her body to someone, especially as old and tired as Harvey, it's like, no, honey, let's not do that. Look at that. Come on now. What's going on? Don't do that. Like, don't touch me. I don't want to give you a massage. And there was one Italian 
Italian actress, and she spoke out and she said at 21, he invited her to his home. She was under the presumption that it was going to be a party, but it was just them. And she basically, um, she said she gave him the massage and he forcibly pulled up her skirt and performed oral sex on her. And so she felt it was a very horrible, horrifying, traumatic event for her because she didn't tell him to stop. And then later on, it became consensual. Now, this is his main defense that he's telling people. Well, I was under the assumption it was consensual. I was under the assumption it wasn't rape. It's like men like that and Bill Cosby is the reason why a lot, like rape victims, they get overlooked or oh, she wanted it or oh, she has sex for that role. I wonder how she got that role. Men like that use their power to dominate women who are coming into the industry or breaking into the industry. And it's very sickening. He's not the, and that's what Harvey said. He has finally spoken out. And he has checked himself into rehab to go under sex addiction, sex addiction. That's after being terminated from his company by the board because of these allegations popping out and saying, oh, you know, he wants a second chance, hopefully. And it's like, OK, we all want a second chance. But for Harvey, he can go to he can go to sex rehab for, you know, sex addiction. Bill Cosby is still old man trying to go on trial for women who said they were drug raped. And it's just like, it's all bad, whether black or white, it's still wrong. And it's still disgusting to be a pig and to basically like tell people, oh yeah, do this for me and hey, I'll get you in that movie. No, how about my acting? How about my personality should be why I get into that film or I should get chosen. If I can't, then, then I guess that part wasn't meant for me. Doesn't mean I'm gonna give you my body sexually just to get a part, please pay that. We're not, we're not about to do that. So Harvey, you know, I get it. You want to save face. PR's telling you, oh, check in the rehab. This will blow over. It's not going to blow over. In this culture, it needs to really be explored more because honestly, he's not the first one and he won't be the last one doing that. And I think anybody, honestly, you should never, you should never have your, your integrity in question. Not for it. No, no job is worth it. If it was meant for you, you'll get it without doing that. So that's my take on Harvey. That's all I got to say for him. But now, lately, I don't know if y'all have been on Instagram or something, but before I got on here, I'm seeing 50 Cent. Now, <laughs> he is a character. Anybody who follows 50 Cent's Instagram page, you know it's very comical and entertaining because he is petty. He is a petty Eddie. He is just no, when you get him going, it's hard to get him to stop. So now his latest victim is Wendy Williams. And I love Wendy, okay, so we're not gonna do her. But you know, with her becoming, you know, with her family and it's like her husband with the whole extramarital affairs, Every, a lot of celebrities, now she is the queen of trolling people and really telling it like it is. So now some people have decided to take the high road, like T.I. And, and Evelyn. But then 50's like, nah, I'm still petty. And she's about to get it. She's not above the petty. When no one's above the petty, you'll realize that. Now he's going off on Instagram saying, oh, comparing her to a lion, saying her body's wrong, saying her man deserves a side chick. Well, 50, no one, no woman deserves to be cheated on, not even Wendy. Not even if you think that's Wendell. She does not deserve to be cheated on, no one does, because that's embarrassing. That's heart, that's, that's really heart, heartbreaking and very embarrassing. Like your man's cheating on you and he's at work and the girl lives nine miles away from you. And this has been happening. Like she has to own that. And that's why Wendy will forever, forever be mother because she owns it, she, okay. I'm working through it. That's my man. I'm still going to troll you. She is that bold. And honey, I'm always here for that. But so, you know, 50, you know, Wendy's going to have something to say. So I can't wait to see how the two go back to back. But also, I don't know if anyone has seen Beyonce, but for her to have three kids, she is the baddest MILF killing it right now. Like, honestly, look at that. Like, Come on, are you serious? B is just killing it. I don't know, her body is so natural. Sir and Rummy really gave her uh, ample body now. Like she, she needs no plastic surgery. I'm like, why are you killing it? Why are you killing it and you're only 36 with three kids and I'm 26 with no kids and look like I could be pregnant? Honey, pay it. So what do you mean? What do you mean, B? Like, you always kill it, honey, and I'm just here for it. Like, she slays it and never pays it. Because B is just, and she, she does it on purpose. Like when she gives us life, 
It's just like the world, it, it kind of stops because when she comes out, she has three kids and two twins. Who would ever think that she would have that? Like, come, come be, don't kill us. And she's not, well, she hasn't had plastic surgery as far as major on her body, but she still always looks good. And she always eats and trains hard. So I'm always here for that. But we're about to go into another commercial, another PSA. And once we come back, we will. I will be joined by Joseph to get into unconditional love. love. Oh my God, y'all, that's my show. Especially Daniel, because he's a hot mess. But I'm always Team Daniel. It's a, it's a Danny thing. So you know, that's why I'm like, I just can't wait. You know, it's here set in Boston and stuff. So now, but now we're about to go into PSAs. I can't wait. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. Welcome back, everyone. And I have with me Mr. Joseph Bencalvez. Hey, how are you? I'm finding yourself, Joey. I'm great. Oh, my goodness. The last time I've seen you was at the premiere. We was doing the first three episodes of season two, yes. Unconditional Love. Now, can you let everyone know about Unconditional Love? Because I could tell it, but you're the creator, so yeah. I'm going to give you your shine. So, so Unconditional Love explores the modern day romance of a black gay couple. And uh, we explore the many ways you can try to maintain a healthy relationship on the show yeah okay then so with that it's how did unconditional love come about like what made you feel like you know what this is something that Boston needs to tap into because we don't if you notice in a lot of like television you don't see like black gay couples represented in TV so what made you decide to be like okay you know I'm gonna start writing like yeah. what prompted you to do that uh, so that was the very reason I started to write and create the show in general uh, for me, you know, growing up, you didn't see a lot of people who looked like me, not only black, not only gay, but full-figured and, uh, you know, people with, um, of all colors and hues. And uh, I really wanted to tap in and explore that, not only for Boston, but mainstream in general for media. Um, and that's where I kind of created this story from. I didn't know where I wanted to start, but I knew it needed to be told. And as a storyteller, it's your duty to reflect the times and uh, really explore what you want to convey to the world. So that's where the story came from. Okay, then. So get, let us know a little bit about Daniel. The main character seems to be Daniel yes. and Benjamin. So yes. it focuses around this couple, and it, they work. Like, how did they come about? Like, with their relationship. So originally, when I pitched the show to myself, it was Daniel and Tasha. Tasha's an, another lead on the show. She's a heterosexual couple that we explore as well. And Daniel kind of spoke to me in my sleep. I did a, another web series back in 2012 called Truth Is. And that story, I didn't really get to tell it how I wanted to tell it. You know, I had everyone in my ear telling me how I should do things. And for me, Daniel kind of came to me in my sleep. I said, I need a black gay man who is full figured, who has a lot to say. He's a very complex character. So for me, when Daniel came to me, um, I knew I wanted to explore a, re a relationship, a long-term relationship. And from then, that's kind of how they kind of came to my story. Okay. To, yeah. Okay, so now I know you have another writer, Thomas, who I love and I wish was here. I have two writers two on the writers, show, so yeah. Besides Thomas and yourself, who is the other writer? Uh, we have Hene Belsere. She oh. lives in Montgomery, Alabama. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, that's amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, okay, that's a, that's amazing. Yeah. So we have three writers on the show. So three writers. Okay. So then, with three writers, how do you guys all like agree? I know in a writing room with every great show, there must be a bunch of mad writers going <laughs> around. Like just so, how is that? Like you know, with writing the whole process of unconditional love. Yeah. So because I created the show, I served as a showrunner on the show. And basically, we had a pitching process. So before every episode, we would pitch ideas. And then the writer of the episode would kind of come up with an outline and then submit it to me. And I would kind of go over it and make sure it serves the story we're trying to tell for the entire season. So I mean, of course, even my ideas, some of my ideas they didn't like, or not necessarily didn't like, but didn't agree with 
where we were trying to take the story. I think we're all passionate about what we do, so there was never really any butting heads because at the end of the day, we want to tell a great story. We want to make sure it remains relatable. So, uh, yeah, it was a great process writing. Exactly. Yeah. See, because it's like the writing and then seeing it, it's like, wow, like this is. This is what I did, yeah. This is right. <laughs> like, how does that feel, like, to see your words, like, on the screen? Like, someone saying it and having and delivering the passion that you want that character to deliver. That has to be an amazing feeling. Yeah. Like. I mean, after I'm done editing, that's when I can really sit back and say, wow, this is what we did. I'm proud of what we did. Um, during the process, I'm always worried about doing the next thing, so I don't really get to stop and smell the roses, which is not a good thing, but um, I'm very proud of what we do each season and each episode. Um, we, you know, we are fully funded. The first season I funded by myself, out of my own wow. pocket, you know, investing in your own dreams. And the second season we crowdfunded. So for me, um, seeing it all put together is a great thing. Okay, so with season one to season two, like, what are the growths that you've seen, like, with the characters? And uh, what have you seen, like, as far as what you have done with the writing in season one and season two? So I like to call season two, or we like to call season two, the glow up, because season one, you know, there were issues with the sound. There were issues with certain camera movements. And um, the writing was oh, great to me, but I saw where we could grow um, as a writing team. I did write and direct the all first nine episodes of the first season. So for me, seeing the second season, it looks like a legitimate show. Like we, my cast and I, we joking around and call it primetime special because it looks, sounds, and the acting and the writing has definitely grown over time, so. Okay, then. Yeah. So see, that's all here for the glow up. Yeah. Like I said, I'm here for the glow up. I'm yes. just here. Now, I know you brought a clip with us. Yes. So this clip, because um, we're about to play it now, so what is this clip uh, about? So it's called Discovering Benjamin, and you'll kind of get an idea of what you can expect from Benjamin this season. Okay, then. Well, let's see the clip now. Let's see how we have the <laughs> clip. I didn't want you to mess up, Daniel. That's the one thing I didn't want. Because you ruined us. You made the mess, and now you want to sit here and talk to me like everything is fine when it's not. Now, I didn't come here to play nice just because you refused to accept any type of responsibility. I never said he was. I know the root of all your troubles. Oh, and what's that? Your mama. Or the fact that you don't speak to her. I handle my business, damn it. And that is something neither you, mom, nor Daniel can ever take from me. I handle my I always have. I know you didn't come all the way up here just to sit and stare at me. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad you're here, but there's something on your mind. Okay, so we just saw the clip with Benjamin. Yeah. Now, Benjamin, everyone, that is Daniel's boo. Well, right now in the show, <laughs> He ain't feeling him, they're but going it. they going through it. And if you're in a relationship and you hit that rough patch, you're going through it. But, you know, okay, so let us know, okay, with that clip with Benjamin. Mm -hmm. Now, on the season one, everyone, season one, it was left off with Benjamin finding a, having a secret. We don't know what the secret is, but he finds Daniel and Daniel's ex-boo, who has, was like his first love, yeah. basically in an embrace, but not kissing or nothing. It just no. looked, it, it, was, it looked like something. Mm -hmm. So with Benjamin, are we gonna find out what the secret is? Yes, you will definitely okay. find out what the secret is. 
Now, with Benjamin, his character, how did his character, like how he treats Daniel, it's like, okay, I get it, we're mad, but you need to calm down because right. y'all work together and you're bringing that into the workplace and you don't mess up my bag. Don't bring drama to my job. Not at all. We don't do that. <laughs> we do not do that. So that's why I'm like, with his character, why, with the writers from the first season, he was, okay, always busy at work, stressing mm -hmm. himself out, to now, he comes in with an attitude, it's like his work is lacking because of the relationship. What, what is Benjamin going through, like, as the writer? What is in his mind right now? So, Benjamin is someone who doesn't communicate, so often a lot of his feelings and emotions are bottled up. So when they do come out, it's kind of, he's harbored all of these feelings all this time, so when it does come out, the delivery, is not what you're gonna like. So for him, he's in a he's at a point right now where it's like I've done all of this for you, and this is what you give me in return. You know, even though he didn't kiss or do anything with Nathaniel, emotional cheating is still a form of cheating. You wanted to, you had the thought of doing it. So for him, Benjamin can't necessarily let that go, and now you add the pressure of I have to work with you now. So this is what we're doing, and um, again, holding on to those feelings, he doesn't know how to not take work, not take his personal life into his work life. He doesn't know how to split the two. So for him, you'll kind of explore that this season. Right. So, and I see that it seems like all his communication problems and his anger issues is geared towards his mom because, yeah, so are we, ha are we having her be the parent? Like, I've come out and she's just not here for it, so we're just not going to accept it and they just don't speak? Is that the role she's playing? So we discussed that a lot in the writer's room. I didn't want it to be cliche like that. That story's already been done. Not to say that it's not important. But one thing we embrace on this show is that every gay character on the show is out and they live proud. And um, the purpose his mother serves is going to be a story that I think is very universal and that will touch a lot of people. Um, we thought long and hard about the storyline, and there's a whole episode dedicated to that that you'll see later on in the season. Okay, yeah. then. Okay, then. See, I can't wait. Cause <laughs> I'm just like, he has a lot of issues, and it stems from when the older sister said that, like, you know, mom and stuff, and yeah. he, his his emotions, not even what he says, but his facial, his body expressions, it's like, it gets tense, like, in defense mode. Yeah. So you can tell there's something there with that. Mm -hmm. So for the upcoming episodes, we're going to touch more on him. Like, we're going to see more of that come out with his side. Yeah. So the next two episodes, we explore Benjamin. Oh, okay, yeah. so we're going to explore. Okay, so everybody, Unconditional Love, it comes out usually on Sundays at Sundays 6 p.m. We come out on time. On time, no <laughs> black. I know that's right. I know that's right. Not 6.15, not 6.05, but 6. Okay, okay, so, because this is my show, and I love watching it Thank during you. the week, and it's just, it's just everything. So I'm just so excited, especially with doing, like, the um, hosting event that I did, with seeing the first three episodes and yeah. seeing the growth in the characters and in the writing. It's like, I'm, I'm like... Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is this is what I'm talking Thank about. Yeah, this I is so that. that's why I'm like I'm so excited and I'm so glad that we're going to see more of Benjamin. Like everyone, if you have not seen it, search YouTube, catch up. It's not that hard to catch up and you can be caught up by Sunday. Yeah. And thank you so much, Joseph, thank for coming. Thank you for having me. No problem. <laughs> thank you for being the first guest on Cut from a Different Cloth. So all right, everyone. Today we're about to wrap up. It was a it was a nice fun time. You know, it was yeah. a great show. You know, <laughs> so we have had Joseph on the show covering unconditional love, and then we also had the latest tea with the Harvey Weinstein. Ladies, I really need to know your thoughts on that, honestly. And then we had Beyonce, we had Wendy Williams and 50 Cent trolling on Instagram. It's like this show cut from a different cloth. I want everyone like it's basically to be, you know, people who are individuals and who have a out whose mind is out of the box like you think outside of the box don't be a cliche like right. that's tiring you know so it's just like be be yourself be original and it's like hard for people to tap into that Definitely. so it some people I think everyone's cut from a different cloth I think we have different stages in life where we find out and we tap into that that oh wow I really am I'm different from most people and I think if everyone started embracing that, the world would really be better. Mm -hmm. Like, instead of feeling like, I gotta keep up with this person, I gotta do that. Stay in your own lane, be your own person. Like, Create your own lane. Thank you, yeah. create your own lane. So, you know, like, I wanna thank my amazing crew. If it wasn't for them, 
we wouldn't have been able to do this. The lights would have been off, cameras wouldn't have been working, audio, all that stuff. So thank you, crew. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. You know, again, I am your host, Danny P. And welcome to Cut From the Different Ball.